my name is Janelle and this is Gabby Hello. and we're going to be your SAIT online summer camp session grade one two leaders throughout the entire summer so you'll be seeing us a lot. Um, there will always be one of us answering questions so please feel free to interact with us throughout the session. I'm just going to go over two things before we start about the fun things that we use on Zoom. So at the bottom of your screen you should see a black bar and if not, you might just have to wave your mouse over the bottom of your screen and you'll see something that says Q&A and it has two little speech bubbles and we'll be using that to interact with you throughout the session. You'll be able to type in your questions, you'll be able to ask questions about us and anything that you'd like to know. We'll even love to hear things about you, maybe your favorite color or what the favorite thing you've been doing this entire summer. So we'll be monitoring that the entire time. So please feel free to ask any questions throughout the session. And the second thing that we're going to use is something called polls. And that will pop up every now and then throughout the session for us to ask questions for you and for you to answer. So for example, I'm going to launch a poll right now. And you should see it on your screen asking, do you have any pets? And you can go ahead and select yes or no. And we'll give you 10 seconds. We'll always give you a countdown. So we'll give you 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And we'll always give you a couple extra seconds afterwards to get in your answer before I turn off the poll. So I'll turn it off in two seconds. 3, 2, 1. And I'm going to end the poll now. So it looks like that um, most of you do not have a pet at home and a lot of you do. So Gabby, do you have any pets? I do. I have a dog. His name is Rocky and from I... the Rocky Mountains. <laughs> do, you know, do you have any pets? And I have three pets myself, three birds. So if you ever hear any chirping in the background, you're probably hearing my three little pets. <laughs> um, so we'll be happy to know what pets you have at home. If you answered yes, you can type that in the Q&A. And if you said no, we'd be happy to hear what pet that you would want. All right, so we're gonna end that poll now and we're gonna look at the second one. And this poll is going to say, are you ready to start? And if you are, you can say yes. If not, um, you can say no and I'll be here to help answer any questions if you're having any troubles with Zoom um, before Gabby gets started with our marble maze. So we'll give you another 10 seconds to answer. 10, 10 9, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, two, one. one. Okay, looks like everyone's ready to go. Yay. So I'm going to end the poll here and I'm going to pass this on to Gabby who will now start her session with the marble maze. Yes. All right, so we will start with this first activity called marble maze. Um, so for this activity, what we will do first is go through a presentation. So the first thing we're gonna check is that you have all your materials. I know we gave you a list by email of the materials you need for the session, but this is just specifically for the marble maze activity. So what you will need with you is paper plate, just one, set it aside, one marble, it's rolling. <laughs> one marble right here. If you have more than one, just be careful with them. As you can see, one kid just kept rolling. As well as construction paper. So you just need two pieces of construction paper, two sheets. And um, I chose green and blue because they're my favorite colors. You can choose your favorite colors too. If you have just one, that's fine. We actually don't use as much of the, like the whole piece. So you can just use one if you have one color only. As well, you will need scissors, just like this one. Please, please, please make sure that it has, it's a kid's scissor, so it has a rounded tip right here, just like this, okay? Let's set that aside as well. As well, you will need your pipe cleaner, just one. Again, favorite color, whatever color you want. Mine, I have blue. And as well as a glue stick, just like this. You can also use um, liquid glue if you find that your glue stick is not going well, but we can see that as we go through the process. Sometimes it, wor it works with just your glue stick, sometimes you will need a little bit more glue. Tape as well. I have two tapes over here. One is double-sided, one is not. 
whatever you have is fine. I will show you either way, as well as markers. I have a bunch of markers right here, lots of colors and such. Okay, so now that we have all of our materials, make sure that you have it in your area and neat and tidy. Let's start. So before we start, what is a maze? Let's just look at a maze. This is from the Calgary Core Maze. Um, I myself have been there and I can tell you from experience, I got lost really easily. And if it wasn't for my friends, I think I would still be there um, lost. But um, a maze is just a path or a collection of paths with an end goal. So you can have a start and a finish. Just like with our own marble maze, we will have a start and a finish. And the goal is to have the marble go through the different hoops to the end. I will show you my marble first. Um, sorry, the marble maze that I made, pre-made, and then we will go do it together. So I have a poll for you again. So you're going to answer the question of have you been, have you ever been to a maze before? Again, just like Janelle mentioned, we're going to give you a countdown from 10. So 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, Two, one. Okay, so two more seconds before I end the poll. One, two. Thank you. It looks like most of you have been to a maze before. So 15 people have been to a maze. That's great. Um, if you haven't been to a maze before, there is a one, there's one right um, in Calgary. It's called the Calgary Core Maze, and it's pretty cool. As you can see, um, as you can see, it's very like big and it has a lot of pathways um and what you see there is a calgary st peter so it's pretty cool and i recommend it okay so what will we make today is something that looks like this this is my pre-made marble maze let me show you sorry just looking for um the view so you can see it perfectly So this is a maze that I made. As you can see, we have tracks, we have hoops, we have a finish line. So this is something we're gonna make today and I'm gonna walk you through it. Before we start though, there is um, ways you can, different other ways you can do this maze. Um, I'm gonna show you a couple of them and then we're going to do the one that I pre-made with you. So, right here is another one that you can make so this is a very simple one we're gonna make a version of this one maze number one um just with other different things like uh pipe cleaners as well as a little tunnel for the finish line there is this one right here too um it's more complicated it uses the pipe cleaners as the tracks more of them of course and this one is super fun too you can have uh, rounded tracks and such for your marble and these ones are a little bit more complicated. So we will go through this process and what I'm gonna do is um, walk you through and very slowly. And then at the end, I'm gonna recommend you to design your own and build your own after if you have enough materials to, um, to spare. All right, so let's get started. So let me just spotlight this one. All right, so as you can see, we have our materials right here, right? What we will need for now is just scissors. So everything else, you put it to the side and your two pieces of construction paper. As well, you will just need one marker to just trace. I'm gonna show you how. So we're gonna make the hoops, just like we did right here, four hoops. So two of one color, two of the other. If it's just one color that you have, that's completely fine. So for one, we're gonna start the horizontal way. So horizontal is like the way the mountains are, just like this. The horizontal way and to the side, the um, shortest side of the rectangle, we're gonna make a little line right here. The line will be two fingers of uh, of length or width, pardon me, for you, since you are 
in grade one to two, it will be about three or four of those little fingers. <laughs> so two, okay? So three of yours or four. Just make sure you trace so that you know where you're cutting, right here, right here. Now, use your scissor. Please, please be careful. If you don't have a uh, kid scissor, that means around the tip right here, please ask your adult for help, okay? Anytime you have a question, please um, write it down, type it down on the chat box, and Janelle will be happy to answer it. So we're just cutting. Try to keep it in a straight line as much as you can. It's really hard to keep it in a straight line. And like that. So now we have a strip. Let's set that aside for now. Now we don't need this for now. We don't need it anymore. So set that aside. Now we have the second color. Again, two fingers, in your case, three or four. Your marker. Trace. Just have a little um, area for you to know where you're cutting from. So two little lines. And cut again. Remember, it's the shortest side of your rectangle. And now we set this one aside. We don't need it for now. We don't need it anymore. Now everyone should have two strips, okay? These two strips, what we're gonna do is one by one, we're gonna cut it in half, because we need four, right? So just don't, don't fold it all the way, just make like a little hoop, and then in the middle, cut. Same with the other one. So we're gonna do the same thing with the other one. Fold it a little bit, not all the way, because we don't want it to um, fold all the way. Again, hoop, right in the middle. And just like that, you have four strips, okay? So with these four strips, let me just give you five seconds for anyone that's still cutting, and then we will continue. So five, four, three, two, one. All right. So with the two, um, sorry, the four strips, we will number them. Those will be your hoops. That way, when you're playing your marble maze or, so, or someone else, a family member is playing it, they know the uh, pathway that they have to take the path. So let's number them. One, number two, and it doesn't matter the color. You can have it like color and the color here, or um, just like two same colors and then the other two, it's fine. Three and four. Again, let's take a little, um, a short, Break so that everybody can catch up. So this time I will give you 10 seconds. Um, let's rewind and just recap what we've done. So we've made four strips. Um, each strip was a different color, then cut in half, um, and then we've numbered them. One, two, three, four, okay? So five more seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. All right, so now we have our four strips. Now let's take your paper plate, okay? Let's put it right in the middle. So all you should have right now, for now, is your paper plate, your four strips. Now also, please get your glue, your glue stick, which is right here. So glue stick right here. And that's all. So I'll give you five more seconds to gather your things, and then we can continue. So glue your four strips and your one paper plate. We can wait a little uh, longer just for everybody to catch up. So just to recap, um, your four strips, paper strips, right here, that is two fingers wide. And then, so we only have four. And please number them so we know the path that the marble has to take. And then after you have your four strips, you will need your glue stick, sorry, glue stick and your paper plate. So 
So I see right here that some someone here in the session has a dog named Kaya. Kaya. Sorry, <laughs> I hope I'm saying it right. That's a lovely name. I love dogs too. All right. So let's continue. We have our four strips, one paper plate, and one glue stick. So now we will start with our very first strip. So number one, we've numbered them all. So number one is the first one. What we'll do is, watch carefully, we're gonna make a hoop like this. So we don't wanna fold it all the way because then it's not gonna be, look like a hoop, it's gonna look like a triangle, like a pyramid. But then just like this, we want to make sure we have the shape of a hoop. And make sure that the number you wrote in the middle it looks, um, is looking up. That way the person, when they're playing the marble maze, knows where to go. So just like press it a little bit, gentle, and that way you have the little shape. Now with your glue stick, we're gonna do this process for all of them by the way, but I will walk you through each one of them. But it's the same process for the four strips. With your glue stick, you're gonna add a little bit of glue to the sides, just to the sides, just like this. And then a little bit to the other side. If you have um, liquid glue, add just a little bit too. That one be careful with, just a tiny little bit just because it's liquid and it might make the construction paper soggy. So let's paste our very first hoop into your marble maze. So it looks like this. So remember, it's gonna look like that. So here I have my number one and I'm gonna paste it, let's see, two fingers from the border of the plate. It doesn't matter where you start, just one border. In your case, it will be, it will be three or four fingers, okay? So two fingers right here, and then I paste. And just remember to reinforce the, to make sure you have the hoop. And then we're gonna press so that the glue sticks to the plate or the hoop sticks to the plate. And we're gonna do a countdown from 10 to one. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And you can always um, sing along with me on the numbers. So if you need to press it for a little while longer, that's fine. Some um, glues are different, so you might just need to press a little while longer. Mine looks fine, it's not sticking out or anything. Let's do the test, it isn't. Okay, that's our first hoop. Let's wait a few seconds so everybody can paste or glue, sorry, their first hoop of the marble maze. So I'm just going to do a quick check-in so we can see if I'm going too fast or I'm going okay, if I need to slow down, okay? So the question is, am I going too fast? Um, and you can answer yes or no, and that way I will slow down or just continue in the same pace. Thank you. So I will give you 10 seconds again to answer the uh, poll. So 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, five four three two one and before i end it i'm gonna give you two more seconds it looks like there is a few people um who still have to answer the poll so two one perfect so it looks like um it's half up <laughs> but i will slow down um i will always in between every step i will take five seconds in between so that whoever is still doing the step can catch up. Thank you for that. So now we have the first hoop. Let's take our second one, the number two. Okay, so let's do the same process again. We're gonna make a little hoop, tiny little hoop. Okay, remember don't fold it all the way. We don't want a pyramid, we want a hoop. And now that it has the shape of the hoop, like a little tunnel, then we're gonna use a glue stick, glue to the side. I usually do about four um, slides of, on the paper, if you know what I mean. <laughs> so one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Perfect. 
if, if remember every glue is different so if you need to add more that's fine just be careful with the liquid glue because that one might get the construction paper soggy so for number two remember we're making a path we're just gonna have it in the middle so number one is here number two should be right here in the middle okay remember you want the number to look up so that the person who's playing with the marble maze can um, know what pathway to take again make the hoop so a little tunnel and just press the sides that you put glue on so that your hoop pick gets um stick to sticks to the paper plate so again let's count to 10 because we want to make sure that it glues properly so one and we can count together one two three four five six seven eight nine and ten perfect so now you should all have two hoops or about two again i want to give you five seconds in between so we can catch up five four three two one perfect okay let's continue same process we have two strips left now strip number three again we want to make the hoop the hoop shape or the tunnel shape with the number on the top so that the player knows where it's going the marble just like that you can sing along if you want as you're doing this your favorite song mine what should mine be let me think okay number three and number three is going to end to one of the borders okay so watch carefully one two three should go to the diagonal side of number one and remember the number should be seen from the top and again we're gonna press for 10 seconds to make sure 100 percent sure that sticks right to the plate this time if you know another language let's do it in another language i will do it in spanish if you know it in spanish your numbers want to tame in spanish you can sing along with me so let's start. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete, ocho, nueve, diez. Perfect. Okay, that should be enough. Again, let's take our break so that everybody can catch up. This time I will bank it 10 seconds. Okay, so as I'm counting in my head, <laughs> um, we will just recap. So we have our paper plate and three hoops. It follows a pathway of like a curve. So one, two, three. Remember in between, sorry, um, for the first one, there is a space between the border and the first one. About two fingers for me, about three or four for um, the camper, the participant, okay? The reason behind that is because we're gonna make a little track for the marble to start at. That's why we left that space. And if at any point you find that you didn't quite glue the, the hoops where they were supposed to go, don't worry, just unglue it very carefully so you don't break the hoop apart and just glue it again with your um, glue stick. That's fine. Okay, five more seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. All right, now for the final hoop, number four, we have, um, we're going to make the same process again, do the same process, try to make a hoop with it, with the number four on the top, hoop, 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 so that it has the shape of the tunnel or hoop, and then we're going to use our glue stick, again, I do about four slides, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Perfect. So now we have the four. For the number four, so the marble is going to go like this, and then it's going to reverse, so back up, and just go back, three, two, and four. So for that one, we're going to put, watch carefully, this one can be close to the border, so right here, not like number one where we left a space. Number four should be touching the border. So number four is going to go right here. 
next to number one but close to the border. And again, press, press, press. We're gonna press for 10 seconds again. Again, if you know another language, you can count um, one to 10, from one to 10 in another language. This time, let's try French. Ready? Un, deux, trois, quatre, cinq, six, sept, huit, neuf, et dix. Okay, that's perfect. Again, let's try the test. It is glued completely. If you feel like you need to apply more pressure, that's fine. Just keep your little fingers on the sides of the hoop to apply more pressure. And again, just like in between steps, we're gonna give you, um, this time let's do seven seconds. And um, that way we can move along to the next step. Ready? Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. All right. So everybody, just to um, make sure that everybody's on the same page, you should have something that looks like this. Four hoops and on one paper plate. Perfect. Huh, would you look at that? I had two plates on here. <laughs> you just need one. Okay, so now we're, let's add our track. So again, we're going to add a track like this. So that's with the pipe cleaners. So like I mentioned, you only need one. And mine is color blue because I love blue. And for this, you're gonna fold it in half, okay? This half, okay? Then with your scissor, again, rounded tip. If it's not rounded, please ask your adult for help. And also for this step, you might actually need your adult to help you because this is metal and we have to cut through it. It's not that hard, but just in case. So it's a little bit hard. <laughs> so now you have two halves of a pipe cleaner. We're gonna just put one aside. We actually don't need one half, but we do need this one. So with this one, we're gonna fold it yet again. Let me give you a break, a little pause, so we can catch up. So we had one pipe cleaner, a whole one, then we cut it in half. Again, if you need help with your uh, from your adult, please, um, please um, ask your adult. And then we discard in one, we don't need one half. And then we do cut one. I mean, we will need the half of the half. <laughs> so this tiny piece. And now we will fold it. Oh, sorry. And now we will fold it again into half. Okay, let's redo that again. So everybody should have one whole pipe cleaner. I chose blue because blue is my favorite color. Now, we're gonna fold it in half, the one pipe cleaner, the long one. I'm repeating the step. And with the help of your adult, with the help of your adult, you're gonna cut in the middle. I say help because it's metal, so it might be hard. So now you have two pipe cleaners. We only need one of them, so you can put one away. And with this half of a pipe cleaner, we're gonna do the same thing again and fold it in half again just like that. And again, you need your scissors. And we're gonna cut through the middle again. So you can see it's a little hard because it's metal. Now you have two small pipe cleaners. Again, we started with one long one, we fold it in half, we cut it, we discard one, one half, then with the one half that you have left, you fold it in half again, and you cut through it. So now you should have two small pieces of pipe cleaners. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is, you do need your tape this time. So we're gonna set our glue stick apart, and let's have your tape, which is right here. So with your pipe cleaners, remember it's gonna be the track. So by number one, by your start, remember there's a space. That's where we're gonna put our pipe cleaners, okay? So as you see, as you see, it's like at the entrance of the hoop. With one end of the pipe cleaner, the one that's outside the border kind of, you will fold it so that it hooks to the end of the plate. Make sure it's hooked. Same with this one, same process. 
place it here. Remember, this is the track, the entrance to your marble maze. And you're going to fold this end closest to the end that's outside of the plate. Fold it like a hook. So it should be placed like this, so it holds itself. Now, as you can see, my pipe cleaners are not as flat as I want. You can try pressing it, but it might just come, out, come up again. So what I'm gonna do is, with tape, we're going to take a little piece, a piece or a small amount, and then we're gonna put a little blanket on the caterpillar, because it looks like a caterpillar. And then press, press, so it holds together, you see? So now this one is stuck to the plate, this one is not. So let's do that again. A little piece of tape, and then, again, blanket on the caterpillar, because the pipe cleaners look like a caterpillar and the tape acts as a blanket. So now I have the track, the star track. Let's take a uh, pause for now, so everybody's on the same page. So now you should all have one track, that's with two pipe cleaners on its tape, four hoops on your paper plate. While I'm waiting, I'm, I got my uh, black marker. It can be any color, it doesn't have to be black. But with this, this is what I'm gonna use to write start and finish on my start and finish lines. So black marker. On the star right here, in between the tracks, I'm gonna write the word stop. So I know it's a very small space. Um, if you want, you can also write just the letter S and then that way you can see it there. So I'm gonna write start, but if it's too, too small, you can always just write the letter S so that they know that's a start, okay? Because I know it's like a small space in between the tracks. Now, now let's um, set, like leave this here, and we're gonna get one of your two um, construction paper construction papers. So remember, we have two. Just choose one. So for me, I'm gonna choose the green. What we're gonna make now is the finish tunnel, and it looks like this. So the marble will go through, and then it will end right here. It will go um, inside. So for that, you need one construction paper. And we will make a tunnel, a circle, with um, that is three fingers of my fingers wide. So in your case, it might be five fingers. So three fingers from the shortest side of the rectangle, okay? The shortest side. If you look at this horizontally, the way the mountains look like this, then the shortest side will be this one of the rectangle, and that's what we're using, okay? So then let's mark where my fingers are, part, so right here. And again, from this side, three fingers right here. Mark and mark, so that way you know where your scissors are supposed to cut from, up to where. And you will have a straight line, okay? Let's take a five second break or pause so that everybody is on the same page. Remember, we are at the tunnel, this finished tunnel right here. So we just need one piece of construction paper with us. Okay, five, four, three, two, one. Now we just cut the paper, the strip. It's gonna be a longer, wider strip. Sorry, just wider, not longer. So as straight a line as you can, as straight. Let's say your sister aside, and we're left with a wider strip. So with this one, what we're gonna do is make a tunnel. So you're gonna fold it, just like that, and you're gonna make a tunnel. So for this, we will need, of course, tape. Half a longer strip of tape, and then just uh, paste it or tape it where the end of your strip is, of your construction paper strip is. And you're gonna do it again on the other side. So tape. And like this, it won't like just leave and undo itself. It just stays like that, like a circle. So gently, now that we know what it looks like, 
you're going to write finish, the word finish, on top. Again, if um, you don't have enough space, that's okay. You can just write the letter F and we will know it's F for finish. So just with my hand inside, I, it will act as a support and I will write the word right in the center, finish. So F, I, N, I, S, H, finish. Again, you can just write the letter F. That's totally fine. Now let's set this aside, like right here, okay? Let's go back to our construction paper that we used to make this anyway, um, as well. And we will make a little um, top for your tunnel. So again, it will look like this. It looks like a top hat, um, looks like a grad hat or a top hat, but we will, um, it's a tunnel for the finish line to the marble to go to um, once you're done, okay? So let's place your circle, your finished circle, on top of one of the corners. Just choose one corner, it doesn't matter which one, and place it on top. And then with your marker, and then with your marker, we're gonna trace where the circle ends. Just like one line. So see, the circle ends right here, right here and right here. Just that it, it looks like a um, square in the outer circle. Remember, if you have a question, type it in. Janelle will be happy to answer the question. She's um, answering questions right now. So in the ch uh, chat box, it's right, to, it's right to the poll box. That's where you can ask your questions. So top hat, top of the hat, sorry, top of the tunnel. And that's what it will look like at, sorry. That's what it will look like at the end, just like this. So with your glue stick, now let's get our glue stick. You will add some glue to one of the sides of the tunnel, of the circle, okay? Just like this. No, it's a little messy, but it needs to. And then same for the square. So same for the square right here, just to the sides, because we know the sides of the circle is gonna touch the sides of the square. Or in this case, rectangle. <laughs> and then you just glue it together, and then you gently press it. Gently, because we don't want the circle to, the tunnel to smash down, you just want gently. Okay, let's hold it for 10 seconds again. And also in those 10 seconds, um, let's recap of what we've been doing. So we've been doing a tunnel. And that looks like this because we want our finish line to look like that. So the marble will go all the way to the finish line. Again, let's press it for five more seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Perfect. Let's do a test, it doesn't fall. However, if you're finding that it didn't glue well, I recommend using the tape. So with the tape, what you can do is a small piece of tape and on the sides of the square or rectangle, you, will, you can glue the circle to the sides of the rectangle, okay? Just like this. If you find that it didn't glue well, which mine looks like it's falling, but Yes, let's add one more piece of tape. All right, so we're almost done. Now all we need to add to our maze is the finish line. So again, your finish line is here. Number four should be the one closest to the border, right? That's where we're gonna add, just like this, our finish line. Again, make sure your finished tunnel is taped very well or glued, and that's where it's gonna go. So with your glue stick again, we're gonna add some glue to this side right here, right here, by the number four. It should be right on the border, the border of your plate by number four, number four hoop. 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I did eight because um, it's like a bigger piece, so I will need more glue. And then you gently, the side, the end of the circle of the tomo should touch the end of the border. So you gently press it. Remember, finish should be on the top or F. Um, that way the player knows where it will end. And let's just press it for 10 seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Perfect. And just like that, you have your marble maze. So now in your own time, you can decorate it however you like. Um, the way I decorated it was I made some tracks. Let me show you. I made some tracks so that we know where the marble is supposed to go. And then I, pre I did some circles because I wanted to trick the player into thinking those were marbles too and then confuse the player. That's some tricks. But yeah, so this will be your marble maze and we can just try it out. Let me get my marble and see if it works. Ready? That's the start. You have to hold it. It's like a little maze. Okay, goes through number one. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Go through number two. See, this is why it's called a maze, because it's tricky. No. Number two, three. Then reverse to four. Go back. Oh, oh. And now it went through four. Now it's supposed to go through the four. Perfect. So that will be your maze. Have fun. Um, try maybe with a smaller marble, a bigger one. Let's see if it changes the pa um, like the speed. You can race with your family and time it. Ask your adult to time it to see who does it uh, faster. You can try with like, yeah, smaller marble or bigger one. Um, you can do so many things. And then with a template that was part of your supplies attachment in your email for the adults, you can print it and design a brand new one and then do it yourself with another paper plate if you have um, leftover materials. I hope you enjoyed this, and now I will pass it along to Janelle, and I will be answering your questions on the chat box if you have any questions for it, Janelle. Thank you. Hi, everybody. This is Janelle. So today we're going to look at optical illusions. I know when answering some of your questions, you just needed Gabby to slow down for that last part. Um, don't worry if you have any extra questions, Gabby will be able to answer them where you got lost. Um, or you can stay around for the last little bit of the session and you can type in your questions and we'll reshow some of the steps. Um, and that won't be too bad. So what we'll be doing is optical illusion. And don't worry, this one is going to go a little bit fast so that we can stay within the time frame. But again, this is all recorded so you'll be able to go back. So this is meant more as a demo so that. You can do this all on your own and even do some of it with your family. So we're gonna do something called optical illusions. And what we're going to do is I'm gonna show you this little picture. So first of all, what exactly is an optical illusion? It's a picture or a thing that tricks your brain into seeing something else. So for example, we're gonna do this first picture. And I'm gonna ask you what animal do you see? So we're going to do another poll and I'm going to ask which animal did you see first? Did you see a rabbit or did you see a duck? All right, all these answers are coming in. And it looks like a lot of you are seeing the duck first, which is what me and Gabby both saw first when we saw this picture. Now, a couple of you have seen the rabbit. And I'm wondering if some of you can see both. Now, if you look to the left of your screen, where most of you saw the duck, that's gonna be where the little bunny ears are if you wanna see the rabbit. And then the head is gonna be the other part, and the nose is gonna be to your far right, and that's gonna be the eye. So instead of the duck um, showing the bill, we're actually gonna see the bunny ears for the rabbit. So a lot of you saw the duck first. So that's one example of an optical illusion because you could see both a duck or a rabbit in just one picture. So we're going to do one more optical illusion. And I'm going to ask you, how many animals do you see? 
So I'm gonna open this as another poll as well, but I'm gonna give you a little more time to look at this one. So I'm gonna give you 15 seconds to try and find as many animals as you can see. So 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay, so looking at the poll, it looks like a lot of you could see five or more animals. And a lot of you could see three or even four, and maybe a couple of you just saw one, and that's okay, because I'm going to show you all the animals that I saw. And I saw nine animals, and I'm hoping maybe some of you also found nine animals. But don't worry, we're gonna have this picture on the recording as well, so you can even test all your adults or family members that you have at home to see how many animals they could see. And this is pretty tricky because even there's a little goldfish that's acting as the eye of the elephant. So that's another optical illusion because we're seeing so many different animals in just one picture. So. With this in mind, we are going to, now we're, I'm gonna now demo the optical illusion that we're going to make. And this is going to be just a hand that looks like it's popping out of the paper. And hopefully you can see that because this would have been my hand here. And when I take it away, we have all these lines that show the optical illusion. So again, this one is going to go a little bit faster just so that we can stay within the time but you'll be able to go back and pause the video whenever you need it, and you'll be able to do it all on your own. So, first of all, you'll need a white piece of paper, and for some of you, that might be cut in half because you have smaller hands in mind, but for me, I'm going to use a full piece of paper. Now, the easiest way to do this is you're going to get your pencil, and hopefully you have that with you, and if you have something straight, that's also going to help you make your lines. So for me, I'm going to use a ruler, and I know we didn't have this on the supply list, and that's okay, because you can also just use another piece of paper as your flat edge. So we're going to start by having your paper, the corner is going to go straight back towards your chest. And so that way we can do an easier tracing of your hand. So I'm gonna get you to take your hand, and you're gonna spread your fingers wide like you're gonna give someone a high five. But instead of another person, we're actually gonna give the paper a high five. And what you wanna do is make sure that your fingers are spread out and that you have a little bit of your arm on the piece of paper. And from there, you're going to take a pencil and you're gonna hold it straight up and down as much as you can because that's going to help you get a nice tracing of your hand. And we're gonna do this nice and slow because it's not a race. And unfortunately, I can't see which one of you finishes do tracing your hand first. So we're gonna start here and we're gonna go nice and slow. That way you can hold the pencil as close to your hand as possible. And you're gonna start tracing your hand. And when you get to your fingers, I want you to go really slow because I don't want any of you to end up with bubble fingers for your art piece, okay? So I know none of you have bubble fingers like a frog. And I want you to go nice and slow, okay? So we're gonna go all the way around the fingers, in between, and around. And you're gonna finish this tracing of your hand so that we can make the optical illusion to trick your brain. So once you finish, you will hopefully have something that looks like this of your hand. Just a nice little pencil outline. So with that in mind, let's move on to the next step. And that's where we're going to use a black marker. So again, this is gonna go a little fast and I'm gonna show different parts of the drawing, but remember that you'll have all the time after this session to go back and color this on your own, okay? So um, what I'm gonna do, and this is easiest if you have something straight, is you're going to do a straight line anywhere where your hand isn't wasn't on the paper. So I'm gonna draw a straight line from here to the paper outline, and again from here. That way, when I have these two lines, I can then draw a rainbow where my hand is usually on the paper. 
Now, when you're drawing these lines, I want you to make sure that they're not too close together like this, or you're gonna have so many lines and so many of them to color, you're gonna be doing them forever. And I don't want them to be too far apart because then they won't pop out of the paper when you're coloring them. So the best way to do it is if, for me, I use one finger because my hand is an adult and I do it one by one. For you, it might be two fingers. Or another quick trick is when you draw your first rainbow, you start doing your lines from the top of that rainbow. So again, I'm gonna do a straight line all the way to my pencil outline of my hand and another one on the other side from the pencil outline out. And then in between where my hand would usually be, I'm going to draw a nice big rainbow. And hopefully you can all see that. I'm just gonna hold it up to the camera so you can see where this is my paper outline. So I draw a straight line, a rainbow, and then another straight line. And I'm just going to skip ahead up the hand just so that I can show you what to do when you get to your fingers. So I'm gonna draw a straight line all the way to my pencil outline. And you'll find that you're gonna have to draw more straight lines because there's more space. So right now we have all these straight lines right in between where my fingers wouldn't be. And then from there, I'm drawing nice little mini rainbows now where my fingers are because each finger gets a happy little rainbow and you end up with something like this, okay? Uh, and you'll end up with something just like this for each finger, they'll have a happy little rainbow. And once you do that, again, I'm just going a little faster so you can see, but you'll be able to do all of this on your own, is you'll end up with something like this, where you'll have lines all the way up your paper, and you're just gonna do two straight lines right when you get to the top of your finger. Now the best way to do this for your illusion is if you can get a curved line at the top of each of your fingers so that the top of them don't disappear when you color them. After you do that, you're gonna color in your optical illusion. And for me, I'm going to use two different colors. I'm gonna going to use blue and I'm going to use orange so that we can do a pattern. And there's Gabby just Sorry. making sure that our cameras are working because batteries. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is gonna use my blue first. And the easiest way I find to color these is you start where the straight lines are and you fill all of that in with your marker. And once that is all filled in, I stop where your pencil outline is of your hand. Because if I put my hand back here, the color stops. That way, when I get to the rainbow, I can start coloring it with the curve of a rainbow. So that it helps the illusion just pop a little bit more. And again, when you start coloring this on your own, you can take your time and there's no need to rush. Then once I get to the pencil outline again, I stop because that's where my hand is. And then I just go straight across again. And you're going to do that with your colors all the way up, going in your pattern. <coughs> and you'll end up something like this. <laughs> so with this in mind, we are going to end this session. And Gabby's just gonna quickly speak to you all. Hello. So I was able to see some of your questions about the um, finish bar, the tunnel or the top hat as I call it. So I'll just review with you what um, the tunnel looks like. So let me just, <coughs> right here, let me take. Juno's hand, um, put it aside. So this tunnel right here, I know it was like a little tricky. So remember what we did was from your construction paper, from the shortest side, we did two fingers. In the case of um, the campers, it will be three or four. And then we just mark it. So we know where it starts. And two fingers again. So, 
that way it, this will be your circle it might be um wider um i did make it wider wider last time but this time let's make it um smaller so then you cut in a straight line as straight as you can make a little hard and tricky and then with this strip what you're going to do is make a circle or a tunnel like this like a bracelet and with your tape i my tape right here a little piece of tape and tape to the end so sticky the tape <laughs> there so I just hold it in, see if there's end, and you have your little bracelet. It looks like a bracelet. And with the same construction paper, on one of the corners, as you can see, I cut it here. One of the corners, you're just gonna cut a square. So let's see where the bracelet ends, right here, right here. So here, here, we're gonna cut a square. Because we're gonna make a little top hat. This is just so the marble, when you're done, that's where it, where it ends, okay? square right here and the square will go on top of your bracelet and that way look it looks like a little top hat or graduation hat um, and then you glue it together so this with this together and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna glue it to the border closest to number four the number four hoop right here right on the border of the plate this is the border of the plate make sure you add a little bit more glue like many times of your glue stick or liquid glue just because you, it's a bigger piece of um, construction paper so you it will need more support and yeah that will be your track i mean sorry your marble maze and again you can just decorate it just like that little tracks and um, if you want to do flowers or if you want to like try and draw some um marbles that way you trick the player but otherwise remember this will be recorded and you will have a chance to actually see it again if you would like and um yeah uh, we will record this and post it on say um on the save website so say.ca slash summer camps and you can find it there and for those of you that got to finish your marble maze and once you do it and once you do your optical illusion hand and if you have any troubles with that feel free to email us our email is found on the state summer camp website and gabby and i would love to see all of your art pieces and marble mazes and everything you've done so have your adult take a picture of what you've worked on and send it to summer.camps at state.ca so that gabby and i can see all the great creations that you guys have made so far yes okay. well thank you everybody um just a reminder that we do have more sessions every week and every other friday starting next friday we have a story time session and that one is where janelle or i will be reading stories to you it will be a fun session <laughs> so gabby and i will stick around for the next couple of minutes if you need any help or have any questions but other than that you are free to go and we hope you have a great rest of the day yes bye bye